welcome to another episode of Carolyn Talks Television. I'm Carolyn Topol, and I'm here with my lovely co-host, Rachel Arnett. Hello. And today, we are going to delve into the reality competition genre. The ever-expanding reality competition genre. I'm beginning to think every other show on television is reality competition drama and yeah. competition. I would agree with that, yeah. Um, and I still wonder how many are scripted. That's just my personal every once, throwing that in right to start with. Every once in a while you get an interview and you're like, okay, that wasn't that didn't flow naturally. Someone gave her those words. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay, so let's start at, I think, one of the ones that really sort of started the modern trend. Mm -hmm. You have reality competition shows. I think Survivor. Oh, absolutely. Was the one that ushered in the modern age of reality competition. Um, the host is Jeff Probst. And the show says it's in season 36. Now, my version of season 36 would normally mean 36 years. He's aged well. <laughs> right, right. So well. <laughs> but clearly that's not what a season is on these shows no, now. No, yeah, absolutely. So um, I think Survivor sort of had an, an incredible concept. Um, you go on a very secluded area where you are going to live off the land mm -hmm. and you're in two teams and there's competition between teams and then ultimately between each other to see who is basically the last man or woman standing in this island. I mean, at first when it was advertised, my brain went, Lord of the Flies, yeah, goes exactly, berserk. Exactly, exactly. But with real terrifying adults. <laughs> right, exactly. real, and adults, not children yeah, who exactly. are yep. more likely to not get it. Mm -hmm. These people should get it. They should be able to work together. And, but because they know it comes down to the individual game, a lot of times that's where the politics comes in. And, of course, they also know there's cash at the end of that little yes. survive. You survive, you get a pot of gold. It's like Leprechaun meets Survivor. Yeah. Robinson exactly. Crusoe. <laughs> and there's a little Swiss Family Robinson. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go, there you yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's interesting because the show's had a lot of really big cultural moments. I remember the first season very well because it was just something that I had never seen before. Mm -hmm. And I remember being genuinely terrified that these people were going to get hurt. And I believe someone fell into a fire at one point in the first, it may have been the first or second season. And they had to say, okay, we have producers, but they're on the, you know, they're surrounding them. They're not given anything, but they're there for medical reasons and for safety. And there were sharks at one point. People were you naked. Know what? It, I, there was a lot. <laughs> I remember when they clarified that, you know, look, this is on camera. They're not alone. Yeah, exactly. Um, they're not alone. There's producers. There may not be formal directors, but there are people supervising this competition. Mm -hmm. And I know personally, um, my mom gene had kicked in and I went, oh, okay, I feel better about that. Oh yeah, absolutely. I was genuinely terrified that these people were gonna be like just eating each other. I didn't know, I didn't know. <laughs> I was like, who's gonna stop them? How would they know? And, and the interesting part is you got so involved that you actually went there. Yeah. So that sends a message that the show was working. And they've, they've tried a couple, um, not um, CBS, not, Sur not the people who make Survivor. There have been a couple of other shows that I think are somewhat derivative. Like there was a show, The Island, uh, a couple of years ago, where they did actually send the camera crew as, co not contestants on the show, but they went and they filmed it all as they were on the island without going back to producers. So there was no link. There were emergency sat phones that the cameramen held, if necessary, but there wasn't this massive production area like there is for Survivor, which okay. I thought was, again, terrifying. That, 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could see terrifying as being a good descriptor yeah. for that. <laughs> I could also see never doing it myself. Yeah, no, um, not. There's I, some shows where I'm like, I could do that. I could jump off of that thing, Survivor. No. No. I watched a little bit of an episode even last night, and they're 35 days in, and I'm like, they're trying to do puzzles. Me, 35 days on an island, I'm like, forget the puzzle. Get me a boat. That's what I want. <laughs> Done. Yeah, I'm not going to be the uh, the basketball that Tom Hanks is talking <laughs> to, and or be Tom Hanks. Wilson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Wilson, oh, no, maybe yeah. he's gonna, you know, needs to get off that island. Uh, no, I don't want to play that game. It's not. No. It's not for me. But it's fascinating to watch, and the and the human qualities of the people and the. As much as it's about surviving, it's also very much about the relationships and the people. 
And there have been some really big standouts over the years that people really enjoy and pay attention to. Yes, there have been. And moving forward then, mm -hmm. okay, so we had Survivor that started the ball rolling, and what we're going to go now to is what's becoming what I would call more of the reality competition light. Mm -hmm. um, last month, we did musicals. Yes. And so now I'm going to move into the musical realm of reality competition. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that comes to my mind, only because I watched it on uh, a couple of nights ago, is The Voice. Mm. Yep. Carson Daly is the host. You have four incredible, gifted musical talents who act always. as the mentors. Uh -huh. Even when they have cycled different mentors in, they always get truly superior talent. Mm -hmm. You have Alicia Keys as somebody who cycled in. Christina Aguilera is somebody cycled in. I mean, yeah. just even the phrase, wow. <laughs> and then basically the two anchors, which have developed a fun bromance, yes. <laughs> is Adam oh, Levine Adam. and Blake Shelton. Yep. Um, and they had Jennifer Hudson last season, and now... And Pharrell was incredible. On and this season. season, it's Kelly Clarkson. Yep. Uh, Pharrell, oh my gosh. You know, once People again, that you would love to work with. And if you people were an who are in their own right producing. Yep. So if they're your mentor, it doesn't matter if you ultimately win or lose. Yeah, sure, it's great if you win. Exactly. You know you've made a contact that's a forever contact if these people believe in you enough to mentor you mm -hmm. for whatever many weeks it is. And once again, they're like in umpteen seasons, but the seasons are like eight, ten weeks. Yeah. They're short, but they're packed. And I, one thing that I appreciated about The Voice right away was when you compare it to the original American Idol series, because I know they've rebooted it now, I really felt uncomfortable a lot of the times with the bad auditions where they put these people on TV to be mercilessly mocked. And now with the Twitter environment being what it is, it just feels very uncomfortable because people can be followed by it their whole life. And I really appreciated that mm -hmm. The Voice had auditions where they didn't get onto the show, but it was never about making fun of someone. It didn't feel mean-spirited in that way. Never, and you're right, they do pre-auditions. You yep. cannot get on that stage unless you have enough capability mm -hmm to be on that stage, to be a contender. If you don't sing on key, they, you won't be there. You won't be in the, what they call the blind auditions. Yes. Um, that was the other thing I always admired about that show, is the auditions were blind. It had to be about these outstanding, talented mentors hearing something in a person's voice. Mm -hmm. That made it unique or special, a, a rasp or a some quality yeah. that said to them, I want to work with this person and see where else they go. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's really great about The Voice is that there are now versions of The Voice all over the world. So many countries now mm -hmm. have their own voice. Um, and they also, in a lot of European countries, have different versions. They have voice kids. And yes. I watch for hours on YouTube. It, it's a <laughs> rabbit hole. Like I'll watch one video of someone I know and then it says, ooh, the best kid auditions. And I'll click on that. But the, these... Children they're amazing. are unbelievably impressive. And I love how they're given sort of a chance here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a fun moment. It's a fun moment, and you get to hear the development of those people whose voices and then stage talent, because they have to be voted to remain on stage mm -hmm. by those viewing them on stage. It's not, it doesn't remain blind. Mm -hmm. Once they're in yeah. the game, they're on stage, and the world has to vote. The world has to say, I will want to listen to your music. And the best part about that is, that I've always admired, is that they use um, iTunes. Mm -hmm. iTunes downloads. iTunes downloads. Yep. So you have to really put your money where your clicking finger is. Yes. Uh, if you love this person you, and you really want them to stay, you have to buy the record. You have to buy that little piece mm -hmm. of download because the downloads multiply more than single votes. They multiply those. Which is, it's a brilliant marketing tactic, but also it's gotta be really nice as the artist to be undiscovered, unsigned, and yet having... Top 10 on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. I love when he says that, you were the number two person on YouTube this week, and I'm thinking, wow, or last night, or whatever yeah. they say, and I'm thinking, wow, that's cool. 
that's cool because you were nobody a week and a half ago. And now now you're out selling Taylor Swift, (laughs) which everyone should do. I'm sorry. Is that two person? (laughs) (laughs) It's okay. It's okay. I'm not her biggest fan. I'm not in the fan club yet. Um, (laughs) Soon. (laughs) But now I will be to make up for that. Okay. (laughs) But now moving on. We have a whole different flavor of reality show Mm -hmm. that's also a competition. Um, I'm going to put these both sort of in the same category because I think in in sort of strange ways they are. Well, no, I'll I'll hold back. First, we'll start with RuPaul's Drag Race. Which you know. I think I've talked about it like four times. I don't care. I'll talk about it all day, every day to every single person I meet. (laughs) Hi, how are you? Do you watch RuPaul's Drag Race? Um, It is one of the most profoundly positive shows on TV, truly. Uh It really, like, it is. Profoundly (laughs) positive shows on TV. It's just full of love and passion and art. And yes, there's drama, especially this season um, that's been on right now. There's been a lot of drama. But you see the artists behind the drag queen personas, and they've covered some really difficult topics. They've talked about eating disorders, they've talked about homophobia, and they do these special episodes every once in a while where, where they will transform a gay soldier who was under Don't Ask, Don't Tell, but now that that's been repealed, they come out and they get them dressed in drag to empower. They've done um, reverse drag weddings on the show, and they do these incredible musical numbers. I, I find that the, they are so multi-talented, and people don't know it. it it's like the most um, out there yet unseen yeah. talents. And they show the work that goes into it. When you see the, the finished product, for lack of a better word, you see these perfectly polished or purposely not polished right, queens. Right. And with, with funny names. I mean, exactly. and that's the other piece of it. They, and they have usually very amusing names. Exactly, and that, that camp is a piece of it. Right. But then you also get to see the person behind that and you see the effort they put in the, when they beat their face, which is, you know, the makeup. They're doing makeup here. It looks like a mask. And then as they slowly blend. And I could never, <laughs> like, if I can get my eyeliner on straight, it's a good day. Well, that's why I don't wear eyeliner, <laughs> just saying. But, okay, exactly. exactly you know? I want to have a lesson by oh. some of those uh, drag queens on how to put on makeup. Yeah. And really make your eyes pop. Because right now all my eyes do is say, Blink. And, and it's fascinating because a lot of people, a lot of women that I know that watch Drag Race, mm-hmm. and I actually know quite a few people of diff- many genders that watch Drag Race. Because <laughs> there are multiple. There are, yeah, yes. we're not living in a binary world. Right. <laughs> um, that feel very empowered as women, particularly some of the plus size queens who are just like, this is my body, live it, love it, or don't, I don't care, <laughs> and just strut their stuff and live in their moment. It's been very inspirational to me quite a few times. I think the show is very inspirational, period. Mm -hmm. Because beside it being a competition for who will be the queen at the end, Mm -hmm. who will reign supreme. The next drag superstar. Superstar. (laughs) um, You really have people. And it does both. It gives you the layers of the people. Mm -hmm. And then it gives you their onstage persona. And then they layer in drag politics and regular politics Politics. and it's just for me this fascinating world that I don't know that I sometimes I feel like I have a right to witness some of these very personal moments but they don't do it in a way that feels like they're uncomfortable or it doesn't feel like I'm intruding it feels like they were lucky enough that they've invited us into this beautiful world and we get to see the truth of them as people and as artists and I just I could watch it all day every day never get tired of it. (laughs) And one of the things I've always liked about it, like you said, is it really addresses a whole wide variety of issues. It's not just about getting on a a catwalk and doing whatever the the weekly theme is. Mm -hmm. Although the themes are brilliant. The (laughs) themes are incredibly creative. The mermaid theme earlier this particular season. That was incredible. And now I'd like to switch gears a little bit to a show that I have a lot of mixed feelings about. Because we've really enjoyed the shows we've already spoken about. Absolutely. Um, I'd like to switch to Big Brother, which has a huge following. Absolutely. I don't deny that. It's one of the most followed shows in the world, especially in the UK where it started. And Julie Chen hosts it in the US. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you know, Julie Chen, who also hosts the talk. And I mean, she's just a whole big deal on television mm -hmm. as it is. But she hosts Big Brother. I think part of it was the entire concept of this. In my brain, the first time I heard it was George Orwell, 1984. Yeah. George <laughs> the Orwell, name 1984. brings with it feelings and remembrances of high school classrooms past. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, and and not, a great, not a great thing to be remembering and associating mm -hmm. with it, although I think that was part of the concept. Yeah. But the idea of having cameras in every room in a home, or just about every room in a mm -hmm. home, you know, with, within some modicum of privacy. Yes. Um, and tracking people and having them be the ones who leave because of the way they've handled certain situations that they're given in this house that they're all thrown into, this group of basically strangers. I, in my brain, I'm thinking they had to have met before they all moved in, and mm -hmm. there's got to be something that happens first, but... Well, it's like they took the real world model, but then they ramped it up. And so, you know, I was very comfortable mm -hmm. with the real world models, strangers picked to living together, things are going to get nicer, they're going to get messy. But then the added competition element, I don't know if I ever, up until this past year, really understood how that even worked. And part of that was because I didn't really watch it. I'll, mm -hmm. I'm willing to admit I was intrigued, but I had yes. so many other things that I didn't really follow. But I watched a couple of episodes You mean you of... have enough hours in the day to watch absolutely <laughs> everything on television? Nerd but, of you. I know. Go ahead. But there was, I remember <laughs> hearing about some controversial elements of what was going on in the UK version. So I watched clips of that and I was like, oh, so they compete and then they vote. And I got little bits and pieces from there. But I, I don't know. For me, it's just if it's on and it's the only thing on, I'll watch it and I'll probably enjoy it. But I'm not drawn to it conceptually, I don't think. Well, I, I think for me, the thought of having someone have a camera on me in my home in and of itself creep me out. Yeah. Um, the other piece of it, which I know is so out there, but I think part of the reason it, it I'm reminded of it is when I first heard of the concept, it reminded me of a book I'd read. Hmm. And a movie I had seen years ago that was an old movie that I'd seen on TV because it was that old a movie that I'd mm -hmm. seen it. Um, two versions of it, and then there were none, or Ten Little Indians by Agatha Christie. Mm -hmm. um, and I had this concept of every time somebody needs to get out of this house, boom, they're gone. Yeah. Now, in Agatha Christie's, it's a pretty gruesome way to go. Yes. Um, Not really the case here, typically. Where only one yeah. person is supposed to end up standing in the end who would be the mm -hmm. ultimately the killer. That's not this point, but I had this claustrophobic concept with the yeah. whole idea, and then the camera's on you at all times, so someone knows what you're doing, the concept of Big Brother, of course. Without access to the real world, with the exception of what they let you see when they want to create certain situations. And now yeah. I know on some parts of Big Brother, people have made really positive connections. Absolutely. Um, love connections, mm -hmm. friendship connections. So I don't want to bash it entirely, but for me, it was uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I, it's, it's funny. I think the concept has always been more uncomfortable for me than the reality if that makes sense. Like when I watch it, I don't well, feel especially uncomfortable. Especially because they know what they're going into. Exactly. It's not like they went in and were surprised that this was going to happen. Yeah. But I, I, I think that adjustment period in the first couple of days is always interesting when they're like bumping into the cameras and they go, oh, and they look, what? Right into the camera. <laughs> but they, they do, like they eventually fall into this rhythm. And of course, you know, the TV broadcast, they only show us bits and pieces. But at least, with, I don't know if it's the same with the US version, but at least with the UK version, there are actual cameras on at all times. And you can go to the Big Brother UK website and watch them at three in the morning if you want sleeping, which is a little too voyeuristic for me. So that's what I'm saying. Like and it's that's, just... that's the piece that creeps me out. <laughs> exactly. Because, oh, you know, I just imagine the little smoke detector in my room being a camera instead and how I'd feel. Yeah. And it wouldn't feel good. It wouldn't feel good. And yet on the flip side, this is a really highly rated show. Mm -hmm. It's very popular. And I say to myself again, people volunteer to do this. They didn't go in not knowing what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Especially they went in by with their this eyes point, open, literally. Yeah. yeah. And, 
I'm sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> and, you know, at this, in the beginning, you could say, okay, maybe they didn't know what they were in for. It's been on long enough that people, like you said, they know. And it's interesting because some of the people from Big Brother have now transitioned into other MTV reality competition shows. Yes. And it's interesting seeing them try to play what they call a Big Brother game, but with the added physical challenges and how that helps or doesn't help them. Yes, yes. yes. It's very interesting. Um, And I think in many ways, it's evolution because people know what to expect now with Big Brother. Mm -hmm. It's similar to the evolution of Survivor, which started significantly before it, where the first group that went on Survivor didn't know really what they were getting into other than what was explained verbally Mm -hmm. or in writing. You go on Survivor now, if you don't know what you're getting into, then you really haven't been paying attention. If you don't know, you're going to eat a turtle. (laughs) I don't know, do people eat turtles? I don't know. That just seems like something they would do. Or eat bugs or things like that, but whatever. (laughs) Do a puzzle after 35 days of starvation (laughs) and dehydration. I know. I'm I'm thinking there's a whole lot of better ways to lose weight for myself. Just saying. Just saying. Um, And now to... Uh, flip things a little bit in another unusual direction is American Ninja Warrior. I love this show. What a strange and exciting competition. I thought I would really think this was like, I watched it. I really liked it. It grabs you. (laughs) Because the people doing these physical challenges, which are huge, Mm -hmm. all have a really good story. They're doing them because they're challenging themselves for a purpose. They're Absolutely. not challenging themselves because they want to be the next um, Mr. Universe or Ms. Universe. Yeah. They're doing them for really intrinsically significant reasons. And they're, and they're all very inspiring in their own way. Even the people who are like, I've lived a pretty good life and I'm athletic and I wanted to try for something harder. That's still really inspiring that they push themselves because these are not easy things that they have to do. They have to hold themselves between walls and jump and move. And it just amazes me every time I watch it that human beings are capable of these feats. I still remember the little cross bars that you had to cross when you were little over your head and thinking that was probably the hardest thing in the whole world to do. And now I watch American Ninja And they're Warrior. removing the bar and doing salmon ladders. <laughs> right. And I'm thinking, okay, um, I really didn't get it when I was seven years old. Yeah. <laughs> because there's a lot of physical challenges out there. And then I think, but I could really admire these people. They're not saying you should be able to do it too. Exactly. They're saying these are elite athletes. We, Some of them, this is what they do all year. There's actually a Ninja Warrior gym in Connecticut where people go to train, owned by one of the Ninja Warriors. So remember that if you're interested in the show, you know where to go. (laughs) Look up your Ninja Warrior gym (laughs) on Google it. I know my son would love to do it. He would have, if you give him a 10 foot wall, he'll try to climb it anyway. If he could happen to win a million dollars, that'd be great. But it's funny because they don't really do it for the money, I don't think. No, these people are not doing it for the money because you could, you, I think because it's such a physical challenge, You know, I can't imagine doing it for the money because you have to want something of your body and mind connection first. Body, mind connection and a check, for me at least, it doesn't resonate. Maybe maybe some of you might think it does, but I think that extent, to that extent, it doesn't. Um, I'd like to move on and do one thing that really was of a concern, I know for me when I watch it in more recent seasons, that it's no longer on the air. And I wonder, maybe giving some thought to folks at home too, Mm -hmm. show The Biggest Loser. Yes. That was super, super popular. You had first Caroline Ray as the host and then Alison Sweeney, who is also a star on soap operas and Mm -hmm. on murder mysteries and just she's all over. And you had incredible athletic um, mentors Mm -hmm. who knew how to handle um, eating correctly and combining that with healthy exercise. But I think it was taken to such a level on The Biggest Loser and brought into such a congested yeah. period of time that in many ways, rather, as opposed to American Ninja Warrior, that the people who came on the show, who did definitely want to bump up in their health, mm-hmm. 
but as a, opposed to the show Extreme Weight Loss, which really was about health, and hopefully, you know, Improving getting to their life, goal, yeah. I found this show, they really were motivated a lot by the cash. It was, and to, to the point where it became really problematic for quite a few of the people on the show. One of the final seasons, if not the final season, I still, it was one of the final seasons, it wasn't the final, I still remember watching, um, and a person coming back, because the structure of the show is the final episode is live, and the finalists, the three finalists, come back after being away for several weeks, mm. having to do the work on their own, do the work of getting Which, healthy. Which, in a con conceptually, is great. And then come back, and one of them would win the big prize. Mm -hmm. They would weigh themselves in front of a national audience. And they always yeah. did that. But um, she came back, and she had clearly lost significantly way too much weight to the point that even the mentors gasped, as mm -hmm. well as the audience. She won a prize, but then, fortunately, health remained, and she put on the weight. Now, to finish us up on an up note. Yes. We want to go to, give it to me. Dancing with the Stars. Yes. yes. Which I still remember from the first season. Um, the, there was a controversy the first season because the person who won the show, who was a soap opera actress, I can't remember her name, beat the favorite, the fan favorite. And they came back and did a re-broadcast, a re-final episode, and he won that time. And I remember thinking it was very strange, but it stuck with me that but they would do we that. Have Tom Bergeron yes. and Aaron Andrews who host, and you have these wonderful stars who come out and learn to dance, some of whom have skills that would reflect in dancing. Like example, Adam Rippon. Yes, like yep. Adam Rippon, who's currently on as we are airing this. Um, and they had, uh, uh, you know, great ice skaters is what yes. we would say. They've had ice skaters, they've had gymnasts, mm -hmm. and they've also had main stars. They had the star of Dirty Dancing. Yeah. I mean, but she had to learn to dance for that too. But she hadn't danced in a while. Dirty Dancing came out in the 80s, folks. <laughs> exactly. Give her a break when and she was And it was, was very on. different styles of dance. dancing. I just think that show, you can't not go on that show and not feel good. The judges are hilarious. They joke with each other. They tease. They make fun of themselves. Mm -hmm. and they their, can't be themselves. And their passion is evident in every judging. Even when they don't like it, they're like, oh, I wanted to, but your one, two, three was four, five, six. And I'm like, I don't know what you mean, but I agree. <laughs> like, you just feel like it. And I think just getting that beautiful ball at the end, this beautiful yeah. disco ball, is just so perfect. And now I'm going to say, the one person I would never want to compete with on the air would be you. Oh, my dear. Oh, thank you. I'm a terrible dancer, though. So by all well, we won't compete for anything, especially okay. not singing, just for the record, because <laughs> I won't say anything about my singing on that point. <clears throat> anyway, thank you, Rachel, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today for Carolyn Talks Television, and we will do a whole lot more of visiting some competitions of different natures in the future. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.